Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 125 of ASP.NET video tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss about caching multiple versions of the user control using vary by param attribute of the output cache directive. In part 124 of the ASP.NET video tutorial, we discussed about caching multiple versions of the user control using vary by control attribute of the output cache directive. If you haven't watched that video, I would strongly encourage you to do so before continuing with the session. In this part of the video, we'll discuss about caching multiple versions of the user control based on the vary by param attribute of the output cache directive. Let's quickly recap what we have discussed in part 124. So on this webform1.aspx, you know, this entire section is coming from the products user control. And what products that are displayed in the grid view control is controlled by the selection within the drop-down list. At the moment, in the drop-down list, we have all selected. So all the products are displayed in the grid view control. On the other hand, if I select iPhone as the product within the drop-down list, then only that product details are displayed in the grid view control. Okay, now since this drop down list is controlling what products are displayed in this grid view control, and since we want to control, you know, caching of this user control based on the selection in the drop down list, we used vary by control attribute. So if we want to cache multiple responses of a user control based on a control value within that user control, then we use vary by control attribute. Okay, now what will actually happen if we use vary by param attribute instead of vary by control? Let's see what's going to happen. So now let's go ahead. At the moment, you know, we have used the partial caching attribute to enable caching. So let me comment that. And then within the user control, we can specify caching using the output cache directive. So output cache, and let's set the duration to 60 seconds and let's use vary by param and then let's set that to drop down list one so if you remember in the previous session we have used vary by control and we have set that to drop down list one because we want to cache multiple versions of this user control based on the varying values within the drop down list okay but now instead of using vary by control i'm using vary by param uh, you know as the attribute and I'm I'm setting its value to drop down list one now let us see how the behavior of this user control is going to be on that web form okay so I run the application so instead of using vary by control we are using vary by param and then we are specifying drop down list one as the value now look at this if I change my selection in the drop down list you know, look at this. Every time I try to change my selection, it is reverting back to all, and then it is giving me that one cached response. Okay, so the user control caching is not working as expected. So if you really want to cache, you know, multiple versions of this user control based on a control value within the user control, then we have to use vary by control attribute, not vary by param attribute. Okay, and we have discussed about that in the previous session. Okay, so the obvious next question is, when do we use vary by param attribute with a user control? Okay, the answer is this. Actually, this question can be asked in another way. When should we use vary by param over vary by control and vice versa? Or what is the difference between vary by param and vary by control? In fact, this is a very common interview question as well. Now, if you want to cache multiple responses of a user control based on a query string value or a form post parameter, then we use vary by param. On the other hand, if we want to cache multiple responses of a user control based on a control value within the user control, then we use vary by control. And we have discussed about how to do this in the previous session. Now in this session, we'll discuss about how to cache multiple versions of the user control based on a varying query string value. Okay, so let's modify our user control to actually load, uh, you know, products into the grid view control based on a query string value. Now, if you look at the moment, at the moment, the products that are displayed in the grid view control is controlled by what product you select in the drop down list. But instead of that, I want to control what products, you know, are displayed in the grid view control based on a query string that I pass to this page. So let's see how to do that. 
So since I'm going to rely on the query string parameter, I can get rid of this drop-down list control from the user control. So let's go back to the uh, product UC products control and then I can get rid of this entire TR where we are displaying you know this drop-down list. Okay, so that's the first change that I need to do. And then within the code behind file, actually let's get rid of this partial caching attribute as well. And I don't need to have this not ace post back condition. And I can directly call this method get product by name since we don't have the drop down list at all. So I can get rid of this one. But then look at this, this get product by name, we discussed about this method in the previous session. So what is this method doing? It simply calls the stored procedure, which loads all the products from the, uh, I mean, which loads the products by name from the database. Okay, so if you're not sure what the stored procedure is, what this method is trying to do, please watch the previous session of this video series. Okay, so now we want to get products, you know, you know, we want to call this method and pass in the product name, but where, from where am I going to get the product name from? The product name will get it from the query string. Okay, so I'm going to use request.query string basically to request the query string from the URL. So request.query string, and let's say the name of the query string as product name. Okay, so this request.query string returns a string. So, and that's what is being passed to this method. This method will execute that stored procedure, get that, get the product matching that product name and display that product within the grid view control. Okay, so that's the simple modification. And the next change that we want to do is we can get rid of this drop-down list one selected index changed because we don't have the drop-down list anymore. We can get rid of that. Okay, so this is the modification that I have done to our product control. Okay, now let's get rid of this, uh, you know, let's comment this output cache directive here. Let's save everything and let's see if our application is working in, you know, properly in the first place. And then uh, we will see how to cache multiple versions of this user control. Uh, the web form, web form one dot ASPX and web form one dot ASPX dot CS, the code doesn't change here in any way. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this now, web form one dot ASPX. So obviously now it requests the query string. You know, look at that, expects a parameter at product name which was not supplied because there is no query string value. Okay, so basically we need to pass in a query string value. So let's go ahead and pass the query string. How do we pass a query string value? Using a question mark. So I want to pass product name is equal to, let's say if I say all, then we are going to display all the products in the grid view control. So we are displaying all the products. And look at that, we don't have the drop down list anymore there. And look at the timings here, page, server time, and client time, user control, server, and client times. They're all the same because every time we request this web form, it is reprocessed. Hence the page and user control, server, and client times are the same. Okay, on the other hand, if I just want iPhones, uh, you know, I can just copy that name, pass that to the query string. Okay, look at that, only iPhone is displayed. All right, now let us see how to cache multiple versions of this user control based on the varying values of this query string. And obviously to do that, all we need to do is use the output cache attribute, specify the duration, and vary by param is equal to whatever is the name of the query string parameter. So what is the name of the query string parameter? It's called product name, so I'm going to use that. So if you remember, in the user control, we are using the query string as product name. So that's what we want to vary caching by. So for differing values of this product name query string, we are going to cache multiple responses. So let's save all that and let's run this now. Now let's build this first. And then instead of running it directly, I'm going to open a browser and then use this URL. So paste that, press enter, you know, when the web form process, it should load. Look at this, uh, all the timings are almost same. This one 
uh, second difference between the server and client time because that's basically the time it takes to process the page but then look at this if I go ahead and try to access that page again look at the user control server time 210958 that's when this response of the user control is cached for this uh, query string value product name is equal to all now as I refresh this look at this uh, the client time changes but not the uh, server time look at this the page server and client time changes because we don't have any caching enabled at the page level whatsoever that's why the page server time changes every time this page is refreshed but the user control is cached for a minute that's why we get that cached date and time okay um, now let's say if I want a version of this user control to be cached for iPhone so I need to pass iPhone so now this user control response should have been cached at 2111 okay now let me refresh this once again look at that all the times changes except the user control server time this proves that you know we have different versions of this user control cached based on the varying values of this query string parameter and obviously to achieve that we have used vary by param attribute of the output cache directive okay so we have seen how to use this output cache directive you know declaratively in the HTML in the ASPX of the user control now if I want to do it programmatically is it possible absolutely we can use the partial caching attribute in the previous session if you remember we used partial ca uh, caching attribute and specified vary by control attribute similarly we use vary by params attribute and specify the name of the query string by which we want to vary the caching so let's see how to do that so basically I can comment this out because I'm going to do that programmatically this time so within the user control class all I need to do is I can make use of that partial caching attribute so partial caching and there are several overloaded constructors we have discussed about this in the previous session as well so I'm going to use the constructor that takes named parameters so I'm going to specify the duration as 60 seconds and I'm going to use vary by params you know uh, named parameter and then by what do we want to you know vary the caching here we want to vary the caching based on product name query string so I'm going to copy that and then specify that as the value for vary by params that's it so now obviously if we run this let's build the solution and then within the browser let's use this URL okay so the web form is reprocessed look at this it's reprocessed at 21.13.09 let's request that once again now look at this all the times changes whereas the user control server time is the same 21.13.09 let's refresh that once again look at that everything changes this time is still the same so this web form I mean this response of the user control will be cached for the next 30 seconds on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day